Okay. Okay. Let's just get the system in check. Okay. Right. Tonight is a very exciting night. We're looking at science here on the Urban Space Force Science Program. And tonight I'm going to be showing you an image which is the greatest image in a sense you'll ever see. And here it is. Just let's get it over and done with. There's no preamble necessary. This image may look a little simple on initial viewing, but actually it is one of the most fundamentally genius pieces of photography and observation into reality and therefore evidence of reality we might have in the world by which to prove evidence to science the fact we live in a fifth dimensional universe. Let me explain. As you can see, we have the stick sticking out. That is one element of reality. Then we have a stick at an angle, it seems, to the left, bent, which is the actual stick in reality, but bent due to diffusion. It's not diffusion, is it, you twat? I knew I'd get this wrong. Fuck's sake. It's, diffra it's refraction, isn't it? What is it? Oh, for fuck's sake. What is it? Oh, dear. What can the matter be? It's refraction. I always get the two mixed up. Always. It's like tautology uh, and... Oxymoron. Anyway, what a shame it is to appear so ignorant in my amnesia this night of many philosophical wanderings. But we move on swiftly. Refraction of light. This is an example of refraction. And yet, we also, in the same image, on a bright and sunny day, with the inclusion of a photon beam at the right gradient, have the evidence to the lower right of reflection. And yet, not only is it so exciting to observe reality at this distorted level of truth, where we can easily observe how physical reality can be perceived in a variety of ways within one go, there is the fourth, out of five dimensions, shadow beam up on the right in the center and now to take into account the fifth dimension we have to account us the observer now consider the human mind the human mind is mo made mostly of water and if this is water behaving where most matter doesn't reflect at least or well, lots of matter casts a shadow, but not much matter reflects or refracts. And thus, it would suggest water, which we are made of, has certain majestic properties which would have clues as to their functioning within the cellular world. And thus, we can ponder. Being made of mostly water, as one Star Trek episode defined human beings, bags of mostly water, then we can look at this and realise we have here clear and present visual evidence to argue scientifically we live in a fifth dimensional universe of reality. And each of these represents, each of these stems of the twig in the river represents four strands by which we perceive being mostly more to ourselves at a cellular level and our minds exhibit these states themselves we have the truth we have the truth slightly warped out of shape from another perspective we have a reflective process that is only happening when we're in good mode and then we have the darkness of the shadows which doesn't have any of the clarity that the others do. It's just a solid beam of darkness. Whereas all the others, you can clearly see how the outside, in a variety of colours, depending on the angle of the light, 
is uh, mottled on the t on the stick. So it's really, really interesting this image, and I just can't get over how exciting it is to prove visually, scientifically, from a religious perspective, exactly how there can be a fifth dimensional approach psychologically to perceiving reality in the very distinct nature of truth that we all experience vicariously, emotionally, intellectually and beautifully, daily. And it is with that said that I feel I should bring this to a close. But just remember how exciting this is and how with observation, like Newton observing the apple falling from the tree, or Mendel studying the peas, we can understand and have a breakthrough in science, the likes of which has, can change the space-time continuum for humanity. It is probably by analysing this that we can get to a greater understanding of un human psychology and therefore replicate biological AI systems if we should so desire to. I personally do not want to. I like reality as it is. And I think God did a pretty good job on a number of things. And any synthetic exposure of modelling can often, unless done exceptionally well, lead to warped practice of value. So there we go. <coughs> this is the end. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Is it? Oh, there's so much more to fall in love with this image. Isn't there? The ripples, the ripples. Do you see the ripples, Charlie? Do you see them? I do. Do you? But yes, the light in the four distinct modes of play with the fifth, the objective surrounding awareness, the surroundings of the cathexis. Yes, yes. It's very interesting, very interesting. I could get lost for hours in this image of particular, particular evidential beauty scientifically at the fundamental level of creatable ingenuity of man to capture the actuality of a stick sticking out of some water, proving without a shadow of doubt and a little intelligence behind the theorem, we are fifth dimensional uber creatures of cosmic sentience made out of mostly water. And <coughs> I think the sea itself and the air being moisture could possibly be sentient in another way. But that's for another week, kids. So well done. Thank you for tolerating me and putting up with me. It's been a lovely exposure to witness of the values. And I trust humanity discovered something brilliant this night. Understood something deeply profound in the wisdoms of value. That honour and truth and focus and obedience in the way can generate in the minds of the illuminated who know what they're doing in the body of Christ and under God our man. And it is in this that I go on too much, too long, probably love the sound of my own voice or just get too bored I want to do something. And I thus bring this symposium of the twig to a close. Thank you. And do you know what's really weird before I go? I have to mention, because I was trying to work out who took this image of the stick, but I can't easily find it online. Therefore, someone in this world has taken this interdimensional image, which I am using to evidence the greatest groundbreaking philosophical scientific theory in the modern era. And I don't even know who took the photo. That is an injustice into the nature 
of historical definition as to who was involved in breakthroughs. So if you're out there, young nipper, or man, or woman, or interchangeable species, and you took this photo, then please get in touch with them at Space Force and say, hello, it was me who took that photo, and I'll go, well done, you've made history, but you'll have to prove it, so I need to see the negative or the DSLR electronic imprint. But either way, if it's open domain, someone still took the photo. Someone is responsible for this breakthrough of humanity tonight. We are receptive to, thanks to my exposure to the evidence behind the witness. We have to really appreciate this depth, this profundity, this, this huge, huge thing that is occurring. Because if you can get to the grips of what I am telling you, psychologically, consciously, sentiently, within your mind, regarding this one simple image of two basic quantities of nature, then you will maybe well drift off into the fifth dimension of the Uber plane and have a grander experience objectively of reality with a little more mirth and chuckle and delight and frisson of fancy were, that you will be happy each day to philosophically muse on this beauty, this reverential thought into the nature of consciousness, and say thank you, Nicholas Newstar, of the Urban Space Force Project. Thank you for drawing my attention to the incredible potency on display in this scientific demonstration tonight. And thank you to the unknown and anonymous photographer who took the sacred image which has done what I set out to achieve since a boy. And that was save humanity from Hades and live a long and prosperous life in the glory of an eternal system of genius which some might refer to who, as a heavenly, or indeed, if you're a communist, a utopian state. But we, at the fifth dimensional understanding level of the urban space force, like to think the reality, when exposed to analysis under insight, can be morphed into that which we all seek itself. And it is through images, such as the one we have just seen tonight, and by the unknown photographer, that I can prove to you that we have at least, because we're made of water at the cellular dimension, at least five planes of operation within the universe of thought. And we can access each one and augment each one by focusing on that which we want to concentrate on. And it's only when we have all four planes of subjective awareness under the fifth of objectivity, uh, potentially, that we can grasp the full awesome divinity of what it is to be a self-realized human being questing under the Lord for further knowledge in this panoply of wonders, this canopy of stars, this ancient, ancient majestic world of so many secret miracles and splendid things and that my friends is a very very good time for me good night